Good afternoon. Have you ever wondered, since uh, it looks like the prices of everything is going up, what happens if I've started a project and now I have run out of money to complete it? That and much more right after this. <laughs> Hi folks, it's Bill and Wendy. Jonathan is not making it today. He's got a little homework he has to do. <laughs> it's called closing loans. That's right. Thank you so much for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. It is hard money for real estate investors. We are Carolina Capital Management. We're lenders in real, for real estate investors in the Southeast. If you're interested in borrowing money, don't forget to go to Carolina hardmoney.com and click the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, then click on the accredited investor tab. Don't forget to like. Share. Subscribe, <laughs> and, <hit the> <laughs> and also don't forget to sign up for Wednesdays with Wendy. Okay, so <laughs> more on that later. You can hit. It, it, was, uh, it was hard to hear the Wendy part, Bill. You're you're getting quieter and quieter. It's hard to hear you. Wednesday with Wendy. Yeah. <laughs> How's that? There That's you go. Great. Those fancy graphics I wanted to see. So. I'm uh, taking Wendy, one for the team. Yeah, that's that's awful. That's terrible. <laughs> that you're stuck there. There's the link. It'll also be over in the uh, chat side as well to uh, log on to Wendy's calendar. Please get in line because she's usually booked out a couple of months in advance. Uh, she gives up one day a week to spend time with people on anything real estate. So thank you for your, your give there, Wendy. Thank you. It's a, it's a blessing to me. I, I, uh, I didn't learn all by accident. I learned from other people sharing with me. So uh, I just want to take an opportunity to give back. Um, so yeah, I'm down here in Florida at uh, the new short term rental that uh, you and I have purchased together. And I am spending just the last few days to get it online and, and, uh, taking my time doing that, of course. Um, but also while I'm here, um, I have been doing my continuing education for real estate brokerage. Um, I've been a broker since 1981. So I just have to continue that fun stuff 10 hours every year. And let me tell you how much fun that is. How much fun was it? Oh, so much fun that it kept me up till 3 a.m. to finish it off. But of course, that's my fault for putting it off. No, um, well, I was going to give you credit for being dedicated. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dedicated or desperate. I don't know which one it is. Actually, You're procrastinating. Uh, well, actually, I wasn't putting it off. I, I signed up for this course like four months ago, and then I totally forgot that I had signed up. Mm -hmm. um, just remembered it this week. So I'm shoving it in while I'm, I'm trying to multitask. That's what I'm doing. That's why it's important to get on Wendy's uh, calendar so she won't forget about you and her appointment. That's right. <laughs> Wendy. That's exactly right. Well, I'm going to start off with a little bit of uh, breaking news, if you don't mind. And I'm sorry, I failed to mention that we do have a uh, chat and comment section over on the right hand side of your screen or underneath, depending on the platform that you're viewing us from. So if you have any questions, just uh, put them in there. Um, all right. So we had some economic news that is uh, pretty important to our business. Uh, yesterday, they came out with the uh, May, <clears throat> excuse me, the May 
uh, mortgage application numbers and uh, year to year, we're down 26% total in mortgage loan applications. 26 Down 26% yeah. from this time last year. Yeah, year over year. Wow. 4% of that is uh, refinance and then the other 2% <laughs> purchase money. <clears throat> so it's obvious that, you know, rates have been fairly low for a long time. They tick back up uh, a little bit, but let, let's face it, if you are refinancing now, it's more than likely because you couldn't qualify for a refinance uh, previously. And there's not a, a lot of purchase money loans going on, although people want to. There's just not a lot of inventory uh, right now. So, Well, you know, the other thing too, Bill, is uh, there are a good number of people who probably could have refinanced, but because they have been laid off or completely lost their jobs or out of work for even a short period of time, they're having a difficult time qualifying for any kind of a refinance or even purchase at that point. Well, that that's part of those numbers as well. Yeah. It could be too on the purchase money stuff that uh, people are waiting to have a house built as well because it's taken a long time to get uh, houses. Well, I know that's certainly uh, continually happening. I, I recently just, uh, just got two new bookings for people who are building a home here in the area. They're each building a home here in the area and they have booked our short term rentals for uh, one for three months and one for two months. So um, it's mean, still going on. Here, what do you mean by here in the area? Uh, the, Rock Hill. Rock Hill. Not, not currently in Florida where you That's right. Rock Hill, South Carolina, they're actually, one's building in Fort Mill, the other one's building in York, South Carolina. Nice. All right. Well, good. Uh, so uh, there's a key to your short-term rental. Uh, it doesn't always have to be vacation. It That's right. Short-term rental. Um, now, they're doing it for three months. What's a little trick that you're doing uh, to stay under that um, or to keep it a short-term rental lease? Well, uh, there's a couple of things, you know, first we offer a discount if they stay for 30 days or longer, the city of Rock Hill, which charges a tax, um, an extra tax if it's 28 days or under. So it helps me save money by not having to pay that tax. If it's an over 30 day stay uh, or over a 28 day stay. Um, in addition to that, we, uh, check them in and check them out at the end of every 28 day period to maintain them as a month to month uh, short term rental rather than a real lease that I would have to worry about eviction court and that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. That's what I was getting at. Um, so good. Thank you for, for bringing that up. So <sighs> Unemployment numbers came out again today. They are at another pandemic low, which is good for initial jobless claims. They're uh, in the 300,000s instead of, you know, way up where they were. And That's awesome. Continuing jobless claims are also uh, declining as well. And we have 25 states right now where the governors aren't giving that additional uh, federal $300 uh, a week unemployment benefit. Because Smartest we, move they ever made. Yeah, because we currently have over 9 million uh, job openings that are not being filled. That's amazing. There's, you know, several reasons why. One of them is, you know, obviously, if you're getting paid more to stay home than you are to work, that, you know, <laughs> there's a reason for that. That's, that's right. Gonna, that's not going to last forever, <clears throat> but we, we have a lot of small businesses that, really can't get enough people to, uh, to work. You're going to find that we're all clamoring to get out and uh, go to restaurants and go do stuff. And service is going to be kind of uh, lacking because they don't have enough people. You go to, you're standing in line at a restaurant and there's tables available and you're wondering why, well, they don't have enough servers. Right. So anyway, uh, ho hopefully we'll get back to closer to a full employment. Now, that said, there was a lot of people at, at an age where they could go ahead and retire. Those people aren't coming back to the workforce. We were at only at 61% yeah. 
of the workforce that's actually being uh, employed right now. So that's amazing. That, that's not a lot of folks. <laughs> It's not, but I understand too that a lot of uh, a lot of people now are starting their own businesses, uh, turning into a uh, self-employed people, uh, consulting, all kinds of things that they're doing to make money on the side. And uh, I think we're going to see a lot more small businesses start um, because they were kind of forced into the situation. Sure. Um, and and you know, I'm sure they're taking advantage of the fact that they're on unemployment. So they were able to get paid a little bit while they were starting it up. Kind of a perfect situation for them. Well, I mean, I was one of those. I was over 50 when I lost my, well, I just turned 50 when I lost my mortgage job in 2008. And so I was overqualified for all the mortgage jobs that were available at the time. So I couldn't get hired. Uh, so I, I was essentially unemployable. So the only way you could be employed is really to be a subcontractor or, or start your own business. Right. Or in my case, you could get into a business where they don't care how old you are or overqualified <laughs> you are. They just wanted butts in the seats. So driving a tractor trailer, there's a serious shortage. If you know how to fly a commercial airliner, um, they need those, you know, they, they have fewer of those, but thanks to COVID, they don't need as many, but they will in the future. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. If, if you're over 50, I wouldn't uh, start training now to be a commercial airline pilot, though. <laughs> um, go ahead and learn how to drive a truck. That's right. A little safer. Um, the numbers that are going to really move into our uh, question for the day is the CPI, Consumer Price Index, numbers came out today. And they were a lot higher than expected, 5% year-over-year um, inflation numbers. So prices were up 5%, and that's a, <laughs> that's a lot of extra money you're paying. Um, and is that, did you say that was year-over-year year or month? Year-over-year. Year. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. I mean, when you look I at... Last year, everything's up 5%. Now, that yeah. includes food and energy, which they take out of the core numbers. So if you're on social security and the federal government decides they're going to raise your social security benefits by the inflation number, they're not going to use that core number. They're going to, I'm sorry, they're, they're not going to use the 5%. They're going to use the, the core, which is they're taking out food and energy, which you still have. And guess what? If you're on social security, you still have electricity, <laughs> and, and you, still and have you to need to eat. Car. <clears throat> right. And you have to eat. So uh, that said, they're only going to give you 3% because the without food and energy involved, it was up 3%. That's still, that's still pretty high. Uh, so that leads me to our question. Uh, and we all have been hearing about lumber prices and not being able to get appliances for months. Uh, I, I was in... Lowe's the other day complaining about the price of uh, lattice to go around uh, my deck. And I was told by one of the employees, heck, we don't even have concrete. <laughs> so yeah. You're getting uh, shortages in everything. And when you have sh shortages and you have a lot of dollars trying to buy them, then uh, prices are going to go up. Right. So the, the, we're going to, so the ugly question is, What happens if I'm in the middle of a project, right? And then all of a sudden I run out of funds, right? What do you do? Well, that's a different question than what popped up on the screen. Yeah, well, I'm not paying attention to the damn screen. <laughs> there it is. What's the cost of everything going up? What happens if I don't have enough money left to finish the project? Hmm. Right. So, I mean, that's, that can be a problem. If you're in the middle of the project and as you're going, it depends on the size of the project too. So a, a lot of lenders won't do ground up construction or they won't do heavy rehab because of that possibility. That's right. Uh, that mark, market change during that, that longer time period. And 
they're, they're more complicated. There's more things that can go wrong with that project. Before well, you know, there's a couple things that you can do. <clears throat> there's a couple things that you can do on this. <clears throat> a couple different ways to look at it. Number one is, you know, when we're underwriting, whether it's a new construction or any kind of a rehab, when we're underwriting, we always um, really, really care about how much money that borrower has in the bank. And, and we ask that question not only for our benefit, but it's for the borrower's benefit because things will go wrong. You're going to run into a, you know, a wall that um, may have termites or water damage, or uh, there may be structural issues that you didn't know about going into the house, or there could be um, increases in prices of wood, sheetrock, cabinets, um, paint. I'm hearing that people can't even get paint sticks to stir the paint. And that paint is really hard to hard to get. So um, there are things like that that happen. So that's why we always care. And you as a borrower should also care about how much money you have in the bank when you're going to do a hard money loan. This is another great reason why it's really important to leverage um, to leverage your deal to make sure that you're borrowing enough money to do the deal and not using all of your own cash to do it. Because it's times like this when having your own cash makes or breaks the deal for you. The other thing that you can do, depending on what appreciation is like, where you're located, how long the loan is, the other thing you can do is you may want to consider a modification of the loan. Um, and what that means is when you are... Uh, um, uh, trying to get more money for your project, if if the appreciation is what it has been lately, you may be able to get a new appraisal on it, see what it's worth now. And if there's enough money in there to lend you more money, we or whoever you may have your loan with would certainly consider modifying that loan and adding more money to your rehab costs. But you're going to have to um, pay the cost of getting a new appraisal or an updated appraisal, which will be a little bit cheaper than, of course, getting a whole new appraisal. But that's a great option for you. Two good options um, for you as a borrower when you're running into running out of money. Right. And um, you can do your own homework. You can pull some closed comps to see that homes are. That we are in a, in a great market because it is on the upswing. Uh, and you can pull comps to see that homes are going up in value because they're all going to go up in, in price because everything costs more. Um, even though you're running short on funds, uh, the values are going up right now. And that would be a problem if values were on the decline. <laughs> and, right. and that's, that's part of the risk you take when you are the uh, fixing and flipping person. Yeah, you, you get the benefit of the upside, but you also have the downside you have to calculate. And a, a lot of lenders are, as inflation starts to go up, they are going to start considering, well, uh, I'm going to require you to have uh, more in reserves uh, to do these bigger projects than I normally would on a, you know, quick in and out. Uh, kind of Right, thing. right. And, and I'll bet you, too, that if you... If you're doing a new construction project and you're six months into the project, you know that the value of that house, the after repaired value of that house or after completed value of that house is much stronger than it was six months ago. It, and, because and things are changing that much. Yeah. Another way of doing it without having to spend uh, a bunch of money with your lender too, is that uh, if you have some investor friends, partners, so to speak, you can bring somebody in, with a little bit of extra money to help you uh, finish it up with a, you know, their money back plus a little bit of the upside. Yeah, that's a great idea. Somebody that has then, a self-directed IRA, absolutely. And then you don't have to worry about going back to the lender uh, for, for more money. You're right. That said, um, not all, but some of your lenders out there, well, instead of modifying your current loan, might actually do a small second behind their already existing first. Another so, great option. Again, once once you can prove the value with closed sales, that lender might be willing just to do a, a small second to 
uh, make up the difference. And that way you're not uh, having to modify. Because when you modify, you're changing the whole loan and everything starts all over again, so to speak. That's right. And it depends on the, uh, on the lender. If this is a <clears throat> institutional lender that's taking that loan and they're securitizing it and then selling it on Wall Street, it's a real pain in the butt to uh, modify an existing loan. That's you right. Take it back out of the pool and replace it with another one. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, they don't want to do it. But they, they might turn around and do a small second behind it uh, again. Um, That's that right. Probably your easiest route is financial friends that might get involved yeah. in the project with you. Now, yeah. as a lender, it, it, as a lender, if you happen to be in first position and somebody comes back to you for more money, being a second behind your own first is a really safe place for you to be. Sure. Assuming the value is there, obviously. Correct. Correct. Depending on the, the, the loan to value too, the total loan to value or combined yeah, and, loan to value. Yeah, as a lender though, you have to justify the higher loan to value with the updated uh, appraisal. That's right. Hey, we're running out of time. We need to talk about the next show. Do we have a next show? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it is Thursday, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah. So on the next show, we have Mike Slotnick, a good friend of ours. He's a, a fund manager up in New York, and he has uh, a, a couple of funds. He's got a new one. He's mostly in the commercial side of things, and we're going to kind of see what's going on with his fund. And uh, I know they're big into uh, conversions of existing properties uh, that we had been talking about earlier uh, in other shows. What are you going to do with the properties that have kind of gone down in value, like hospitality and retail? Yeah. And Mike's one of the smartest guys we know. Yep, absolutely. Almost as smart as Wendy Sweet. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Thanks again for joining us on the Real Estate Investor Show. Hard money for real estate investors. Uh, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell, all that good stuff. We are Carolina Capital Management. We are lenders in the Southeast for real estate investors. If you're interested in borrowing money, go to our website, carolinahardmoney.com. Click on the apply now tab. If you're a passive investor looking for passive returns, click on the accredited investor tab. And lastly, don't forget to sign up with Wednesday with Wendy. <laughs>